Hello everyone, our names are Trisha Carey and Parnika Moniandi. Our project is on the impact of poverty on COVID-19 infection in the Kansas City, Missouri area. Socioeconomic status and other social determinants of health have long impacts on multiple aspects of health for individuals, and the COVID-19 pandemic further exposed these disparities on lower socioeconomic populations. Historically, pandemics have had higher rates of infection and mortality among the most disadvantaged communities. Emerging evidence from a variety of countries suggests that these inequalities are being mirrored today in the COVID-19 pandemic as it has exacerbated existing social inequalities in chronic disease and the social determinants of health. National data suggests that those in impoverished areas are less likely to be tested and have higher percent positive rates. In fact, recently in a study by Dr. Shannon Monnet at Syracuse University, it was shown that the testing rates have been lower in states with higher percent black populations and higher poverty rates. Specifically, in regards to Kansas City, it has a long history of race and class segregation affecting poverty distribution. To many Kansas Cityans, East of Truce, the unofficial color line of the city's segregated history, has long implied crime and poverty, while the west side of the avenue signifies privilege and wealth. The aim of the study is to determine if COVID-19 percent positive rates were disproportionate among Kansas City zip codes with higher poverty rates, thereby reflecting national data. In regards to our methods, Kansas City, Missouri, COVID-19 testing and case numbers were collected from the Open Data KC from the start of the COVID-19 testing of spring of 2020 to March of 2021. Percent positive rates of COVID-19 were calculated for zip codes via the equation number of cases over number of residents tested. Poverty rates were collected through the 2019 U.S. Census. Zip codes were then arranged from highest percentage of individuals below the poverty line to lowest. The highest 10 and the lowest 10 zip codes were determined and divided into high rates of poverty group versus low rates of poverty group. The corresponding percent positive rates of COVID-19 for each category zip codes were then averaged and a two-tailed independent sample of t-test was performed. In the high rate of poverty group, the average percent positive rate was around 20%. In the low rate of poverty group, the average was around 17%. While the high rate of poverty group did have a higher percent positive rate of COVID-19, the results between the two groups was found to be not statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.136. So the available data sh we collected shows that those in zip codes with high poverty rates do not have statistically significant higher percent positive COVID-19 test results, inconsistent with national data. However, this health department data may be unreliable as recent reports claim Missouri's health department has undercounted COVID-19 tests. Chris Prenner, a sociologist at St. Louis University, said regarding the case count of COVID-19, we will never know how many cases there were. This is because a dis discrepancy between both local and state reports in that some counties were not reporting positive antigen test results. Also, those in low income areas may be less likely to be tested for numerous reasons, such as access to tests, transportation to the testing sites, and fear of stigma associated with the illness. Furthermore, it's important to consider that if individuals get tested, it may lead to quarantine, which can further lead to loss of income and jobs in an already down economy. This study can be expanded with more reliable testing data to better understand how social determinants of health, including poverty, affect COVID-19 exposure and testing in Kansas City. Understanding the effects of this pandemic and the inequalities patients face can help the medical community combat the continued social, economic, and political inequalities that continue to exist. In doing so, we can help create a future in which we can provide an equitable health care for all. We would like to thank Dr. Yulin Hank for all of her help and guidance in this project. Thank you for your time, and we hope this study has furthered your learning about disparities in the COVID-19 pandemic.